workplaces are killing us uh, in several ways. Number one, they're working us to death. Too many hours. Hours have been shown to be related, for instance, to blood pressure in an almost monotonic relationship. Workplaces are killing us because they stress us. Um, an absence of uh, job control, work-family conflict, uh, economic insecurity is obviously stressful. So the combination of working us to death and stressing us to death is what's killing us. We understand that uh, people's minds affect their bodies. Uh, and stress is, of course, a mental state and a mental attitude. So in some sense, it's not that surprising that things that make you stressed, nervous, anxious, uh, feel out of control would have enormous physiological impact. And that's what the epidemiological literature has shown really for a long time. So our contribution in the research that we did was to take a bunch of stuff that was kind of sitting there and put it together. So there were studies of health effects of various workplace stressors, and there were estimates of the pre prevalence of various workplace stressors. What we did is put this all together in a big model to estimate the total effects on population health and healthcare costs. What we found when we put all these data together is that our best estimate is that there are about 120,000 excess deaths annually just in the United States and close to $200 billion in excess healthcare costs as a consequence of what we call exposures to harmful workplace conditions. And those would be things such as economic insecurity, um, absence of health insurance, shift work, work family conflict, things that either affect directly access um, to health care, like health insurance, or put stress and strain on people. So when you say what is the worst, it depends upon the outcome. It turns out death is cheap. Once you die, your health care costs stop. So the biggest contributors to health care costs are what I would call chronic stressors, things like work-family conflict, um, and economic insecurity. The single biggest factor affecting mortality is the absence of access to health care, which comes from not having health insurance. So the causes of costs are a little bit different than the causes of mortality because mortality and costs are not perfectly correlated. Things like economic insecurity and work-family conflict had pretty large effects not as big as the absence of health insurance or work hours, but almost as big. So psychology matters as well. Well, I think for people, uh, employees, they need to understand that going to places where they experience work-family conflict, shift work, long work hours, economic insecurity, don't get access to health insurance, that this is more than just, you know, something that's inconvenient. This is something that actually affects their um, well-being in a deep and profound way. And they ought to take these factors into account as they select their jobs. Uh, for employers who are concerned about health care costs, they should worry a lot about the work environment. At the moment, employers worry mostly about individual decisions eating, exercise, smoking, drinking, things like that. Or they worry about broad social policy issues like how we pay for health care in the United States. A lot of their excess health care costs come from what happens to people every day in the work environment. And almost everything that is around the work environment are things that employers could fix if they wanted to. Just as we have regulated um, secondhand smoke exposure, presumably public policy could do something uh, to intervene um, and not so much to regulate the workplace, but if you think about it, what we're talking about is a form of social pollution. So 50, 60, 70 years ago, if I fouled the water or fouled the air, I did not have to pay for the cost of that. And so if you had companies incur the costs of laying people off and making people feel economically insecure. If you had companies facing the costs of um, 
uh, not providing people health insurance, uh, not providing people flexibility to take care of their family obligations, uh, not providing justice and fairness, which is another one of the workplace exposures, then those costs would become internalized to the employer and they would make better and more economically rational decisions. But at the moment, they just pass the costs off to the larger society, so therefore they are not very concerned about this. Because at the end of the day, if you think about it, um, if an employee gets really sick or really dies, the, the, they drop out of the workforce and they're no longer the employer's responsibility at all. So what we need to do with respect to social pollution or human pollution is what we have done in the past with environmental pollution, which is to have the employers see the cost of their actions so they can make more intelligent and sounder decisions.